Welcome to this Rift Let's Play Your Sambo. We're finally here folks after all of the fantastic feedback I keep hearing from people about how wonderful this MMO is. We're about to take the plunge. You know a lot of people whose opinion I trust have said to me Sambo this is one of the best MMOs that's come out in the past five years. I must admit I wasn't really interested in another MMO but after hearing the opinion of people whose opinion I do have faith in, I had no choice but to come in and take a look. So we're about to take a journey and see if they're right, I guess. So here we are right at the very beginning. I haven't even created a character yet, so I thought I'd walk you through that so that you have some idea of what sort of power the character creator has, what choices we have right at the beginning uh, in terms of factions and in terms of... Uh, our looks etc etc and the races and classes so here we go I certainly hope you enjoy this ride I'm really looking forward to it and welcome 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 so radio first up right off the bat when you go to create your character one of the first choices you get to make is of course the faction that you choose so um, in this game there are two factions there's the well it's actually you know what there's three factions from what I can tell uh, we'll get more into that a bit later on but one of them is an NPC faction, in other words, you know, a computer controlled faction. But in terms of players, we've got two. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what are we? We've got the Guardians and we've got the Defiance. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assume that the Guardians are your stereotypical good guys and that the Defiance either have a bone to pick or an axe to grind or something and they're our stereotypical not so good guys. I'm not going to. Um, jump to the conclusion that it's good and bad um, but definitely looks like light and dark to me so let's have a quick read of this description here guardians are the chosen of the gods brought back from death to save the world from the corruption of the dragons each guardian has a great destiny to become a celestial hero <clears throat> well there you go um, now what about the Defiance? Defiance have taken fate into their own hands, turning away from the Vigil to pursue their own plan. They harness the power of the planes to fuel magical technologies for the defense of Talara. Now for those of you who don't know, Talara is the setting of the game. It's the land or the planet, I'm not, to I'm not totally sure to be honest, um, but it's certainly the environment that we're in. It's named Talara. And in fact, a small quick fact for you, I do believe that originally the game was called um, either Guardians of Talara or Rifts of Talara or something like that. I'm sure somebody will be able to let me know exactly what it is in the comment box. Um, but then they just shortened the name to Rift. But given that it's such a massive part of the game, and if you're saying, Sambo, what the hell are you talking about? What is a Rift? Well, we'll get onto that much later. So, anyhow, to um, keep with tradition of my um, past. That made no sense to the tradition of my past to keep in a tradition with my playing style is what I meant to say. I'm going to go the good guys. Yes, okay, I hear all you people going, oh, not a good guy. Can't you be evil for once? Well, no, actually, I can't because that's what I do. I like to play through a game from the good, in inverted commas, um, perspective because then, it, for me, it makes playing through as an evil character a lot more relevant. I like to be able to understand what it is that I'm up against and what I'm wanting to destroy or or whatever's gone wrong. I just like to see it from the light slash good perspective always first. So there we go. We're choosing Guardians and we're in. So here we are. Right away it throws you into the race selection screen. And I do, you know what, I mean I've had a quick play around um, with the game. A very quick play around prior to making this episode. And one thing I really need to say is how slick the interface is. Now, I know it's not going to translate very well across onto this YouTube episode, but you know what, when you're actually playing the game and, and mousing around and choosing things, the interface is so smooth, it's not funny. It's just not clunky at all. It's really well laid out. It's really well, clearly really well programmed uh, and really well optimized for um, all sorts of PCs I'd care to imagine. Now, I'm just on that I don't have the beefiest PC in the world by any stretch of the imagination but I am running the game initially on ultra uh, and I'll show you those settings a bit further on 
because what I want to be able to do is crank it up full and then drop it back if we run into performance issues. But what it'll also do is show us how well it scales on a average PC. So <clears throat> if it's all clunky and chunky, that's why. It's because we've got it set to ultra. All right, anyway, on with things. Here we go. So we have our races. It looks like we've got selected, yes, that's glowing. Um, a high elf. So let's take a look at the three races for a start. We've got Methosian, if that's, excuse me, if that's how you pronounce it. We've got high elf and we've got dwarf. Whoa. Okay, that, <laughs> excuse me, that is a dwarf. I mean, wow, look at that. I don't know if you can tell, but he's got hairy arms. He's um, butt ugly. Um, obviously, very weather beaten and old. That really looks like a dwarf. I'm, I'm super impressed. Actually, you can't probably pick out the detail on the video, but even looking around at the shaved section of his head there, there is so much fine detail in the texture work going on there. <clears throat> it looks incredibly realistic. That, that really is something special. Wow. Anyway, so what do we got here? The Methosians. So obviously these are the generic human type uh, of race. Long before it was destroyed by the Shade, Cold Methosia was ever the home of legendary heroes, heroes and warriors. <clears throat> now what's most important here of course is that each race is going to give you a racial, well in this case it's going to give you two racial abilities. Um, so let's see what they are for the Methosians or the human side of things. So it's giving us a thing called Motivational Roar increases the movement speed of you and nearby group members by 30% for 10 seconds. Can't be used in combat and it's got a two minute cooldown. Okay, so that's, a, that's an escape button right there. Um, although not used in combat, not sure it's going to be much use in PvP, but still, that is yeah interesting. Um, and the other one is called Legacy of the Shade. Death resistance increased by 20. Now, I'm going to assume that that doesn't mean it's going to resist your chance of dying it might i don't know but i'd say that death is probably going to be a type of damage in the game i'd imagine well i guess we'll see as we move on anyway let's have a look at the racials of the high elf which here it says are the oldest of the races in talara the high elves are the protectors of the land wise and skilled their tranquil nature masks a ruthless dedication to the gods. There you have it. So they have a racial ability called Angelic Flight. It's got a 15 second cooldown. And, and what do you do here? You fly towards the selected area. Cannot be used in combat. <coughs> Excuse me, which makes sense with uh, most of these racials, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and I've got a frog in my throat. Very sorry. I'd say towards the selected area that's probably going to throw a target area on the ground for you that you can click on and allow you to sort of leap towards it. I'd imagine what that is. Um, their other racial ability is a grace of the forest. Life resistance increased by 20. Yeah you know what there you go. Life the uh, Methosian one or whatever they're called was death. I'm going to absolutely assume that these are damage types or weapon types or something like that. Um, so let's, in other words, you know, a particular class or race will attack you with a damage called life or of the life type. And if that's the case, I think we're probably going to be resistant to it or, uh, by an extra 20 points. And perhaps it's like WoW, whereby you have, you know, shadow damage, holy light damage, etc, etc, arcane damage. I'd imagine that's what it's like. So actually, interestingly, I wonder what this third one will be. The dwarves are known for their stolid and pragmatic nature, uh, but are also curious and creative people, masters of whatever craft they employ. So no surprises there. Obviously, dwarven crafting is a theme that carries through in fantasy. Let's have a look at their racial abilities. Density. Um, that reminds me of Back to the Future. Um, I'm sure you can figure out why. Anyway, density. Dwarves can fall twice the distance of other races. That's interesting. So, um, okay. Well, I guess, so I guess you can jump off things twice as high as any other race and not die, I guess. Um, that's an interesting one. Miracle of the Hammernell. Water resistance increased by 20. Okay, that's interesting. So, possibly there's a type of damage called water. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, I know that you guys are going to scream and yell and say, Sambo, make a male character. You know what? No, I'm not going to make a character. Oh, hello. Not going to make a male character because I'm the one that has to play it. You get to fast forward if you don't like it. 
I like to look at something that's appealing. I'm not saying that looking at a guy isn't appealing. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to stop myself right there. Anyhow, long story short, I'm going to make a female. Deal with it. Um, interesting. They have female dwarves. A lot of games don't have female dwarves. I'm just flicking through these presets. Without doubt, I'm going to go for the high elf female here with her angelic flight and her grace of the forest. So, hello to you. Let's hop into the next section. Okay, so now we're looking at archetypes by the look of things. We've got a warrior, a cleric, a rogue, and a mage. Now, if any of you are like me and have done even just a little bit of uh, research about Rift, one of the things you'll know that stands out about this game is its um, absolute domination in terms of class configuration. This MMO has to be one of the most class configurable games on the market, if not in all time. Uh, I'm sure somebody will correct me uh, on that one. But I do know from looking at the online talent builders that you can create some absolutely crazy useful interesting fun custom classes it, it you know this game does not lock you down to stereotypical archetypes uh, for example uh, i know someone right now who's playing the game and effectively they're a tank and they're a healer and they're a dps -er, uh, all in the same character they can switch roles to uh, match their situation absolutely amazing anyhow what I want to do is make sure that I'm matched up with Romanova because as you know Romanova will be joining me later on in the series as we get out into the big bad world and from what I understand he's going to um, be rolling himself a nice tanky melee uh, warrior-ish type of um, character which also has heals by the way so he's going to be able to take a beating and also heal himself and me so what I've decided to do is go for a real glass cannon. Now, if you don't know what a glass cannon is, um, go look it up on Wikipedia or something. Um, and that's exactly what I want to do. And I want to be a ranged nuker. I just want to have pretty much no defenses, be really fragile, but absolutely dish out the death and damage. So as you can imagine, um, that probably means I'm not going to be a warrior in this case and I'm not going to be a cleric so just in case you need explaining warriors wear plate mail in this game and they excel in melee combat I'll just read these out although they may rely upon their martial skill many also wield magic warriors build up attack power so that's their special um, power that persists across fights which is great to fuel their devastating attacks. So I guess it's kind of like rage if you're a warrior in WoW, something like that. Now, if you are wanting to see some great videos of someone playing a really custom um, warrior class in this game, I suggest you hit up um, YouTube for Torgrim, T-A-U-G-R-I-M. In fact, I'll put his link in the comment box below. He's managed to get himself a really cool Rift Walker Warrior, which is um, effectively a tank. It's an upfront melee character. It's a ranged magic um, DPSer, plus it's, it's got snares, roots, and heals. And that looks like it's really fun. Um, so just going to show that you know even if you choose Warrior, you can really mix it up. You don't have to be stuck with your typical um, tanky, spanky type role. Let's have a look at the Cleric over here. So whereas a warrior wore plate mail, our cleric would be clad in chain mail and they're renowned for healing magic. Cleric spells are varied as their patron deities and spirits they follow. Clerics are capable combatants, skilled with spells or with a mace, so there you go, they can wield a mace. Clerics fuel their spells with holy manner. Alright, so recap, warrior is plate mail and cleric is chainmail. Then we go to the good old rogue archetype here and it says rogues don leather armor and wield light weapons so I'm going to assume that they're things like um, daggers. Proving powerful both at melee and at range. Okay so perhaps they also have bows. I'd imagine of all the classes the rogue would have a bow here. Rogues are most effective against a single target upon whom they build up attack power to enable their most damaging strikes. So obviously uh, similar to a warrior there they've got a special power like rage that you probably need to go hit on things in order to build up and then be able to use your extra special powers and of course that finally brings us here to the mage where what does it say mages only protections are their cloth robes and their potent magic mages must carefully manage their mana 
and the charge that builds within them, which they can harness for even greater power at critical moments. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and assume that much like something like, ooh, yeah, let's say Warhammer Online. If you ever played a mage archetype in that game, you'll know that you had that special sort of dark power uh, meter that built up with certain abilities and then you could unleash it with um, extra special long cooldown spells. I'd imagine that that's what happens here when it says that they must carefully manage their mana and the charge that builds within them. So there's obviously some kind of special mana charge that we're able to use there. So anyhow, anyhow we're going to go with a mage onwards and upwards and look at that it takes us straight to the character creation screen. So I'm of two minds here what I might do is I might quickly flick through um, these settings and then put the video on pause while I spend you know what will probably end up being three hours if anyone knows me creating my own character but before I do that I'll just quickly flick through and show you what is available so um, okay one good thing I can notice here is that there's a padlock icon on every particular section meaning that presumably we can get ourselves um, set up with a particular setting here and lock it and then go down the bottom under our name and hit random oh no here it is random over here that's the random name generator if I click that Patna there we go so it's generating some names uh, but over here will be the random button down at the bottom right for all of these particular features of creating our physical uh, appearance if I presume you have the lock on as you can see there I've turned that lock on uh, and you were to hit random it wouldn't mess with the particular one that you've locked so that means you can customize one component but randomize the rest so that's pretty cool um, so first up we've got a slider here which is able to take us out just it just looks like it's our face shape between triangular circular and square jawed and we can have any combo of that and that's actually moving and changing the look of our face a lot that's amazing we have a slider here to cycle through various shading and features like nose oh, maybe I'll throw that on the side so you can have a look you can see it changing there we've got our eyes we've got the scale of our eyes which we can make small or large geez they the characters look fantastic in this game it's amazing we've got our, our colors here uh, we've got the rotation of our eyes which we can move up and down and of course oh look at that there's a whole whole crap ton of different eye, um, eyebrows there so that's cool we've got our nose so we can um, change the tilt I'll turn her on her side so you can actually see change the tilt of her nose and we can have, of course change the size of it as well we've got her mouth so that's basically her mouth size we can have her puckering up there or nice full lips we've got her ears which we can you know, make huge like Yoda or, or tune them down a bit and we can turn them up and down in terms of angle so that's pretty cool I like that all right we have our hair and we've got our particular uh, we can change its color obviously we can change the highlight color so for example I can have white hair hair but have a purple highlight or if I had um, purple hair with a white highlight you get what I mean so lots of options there plus of course there appears to be eight different hairstyles let's just zoom out a little bit and flick through those so we've got a ponytail um, or rather a bun we've got some close crop stuff we've got some curly whirlies pigtails nice flowers in the hair we've got the swept look which is probably I'm thinking one I'll go for oh, I like that one too we've got some very Swedish looking pigtails um, my apologies to all the Swedes watching for my terrible accent um, so it looks like there's about 12 hairstyles to choose from there all very cool we've got markings as well um, I'll zoom in you can maybe see on her fore in fact I'll make them darker so that you can see let's see that's about as dark as they get I think so we've got various sort of tattoos over now oh, why don't I change there we go that's better various tattoos on her forehead that we can change I must admit they're pretty cool too they're very subtle I like it oh there was a subtle one there that you won't be able to see in the corner of her eyes that was really nice um, makeup so we have oh this is cool aside from changing the base color we can actually go through here if I select them and hopefully you can see that on the YouTube video we've got different eye markings Wow I hope you can see the detail on that there's I'm not going to try and describe them all but they're very subtle very nice that Wow 
that is impressive I must say um, we've got our body skin color so obviously um, whoops that's makeup we can change her from being slightly darker to a ready pinkish color to being a whitey um, we've got her height so there's a subtle difference in height there and then of course we've got the random button so we can just completely go nuts and just let the random nature of the system choose for us and of course we also have a whole bunch of presets that are locked in as well so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause right here and I'm gonna go nuts and create my character and we'll be right back and we're back in here we go after well actually that only took about 40 minutes which is a, a pretty amazing for me and I know what you're thinking you're gonna say Sambo it just looks exactly the same as the preset well actually it doesn't you probably can't see all the minor details uh, that I've tweaked there but anyhow I'm happy it's me that has to play it and I want to be happy with my high elf character mage so there she is let's hope that my name is there and let's see what happens next creating new character oh my god my name was actually there amazing and it's cutscene time among the fallen and descended the worthy not for their virtue but for their might in you they placed their faith their hope and their power you are our salvation you are a guardian Alright folks, I don't know if that was just just you, just me or whatever, but that was really that was really quiet, actually, that cutscene. That was interesting. Oh well, never mind. Alright, so here we are out in the real wide world. The first thing I want to look for is um, okay, that's a little tip there showing us how to move. It's pretty standard. Same as any MMO. Oops, and it looks like I'm in the middle of someone that looks exactly the same as me. Now, of course, because we're in a new MMO, we're going to see lots and lots of um, new characters, I'd imagine. So the world's going to be nice and populated. And yes, my goodness, it does look pretty. Wow. Okay, so here it's saying in interacting with new uh, quest givers. Green is a new quest. Blue is a talk to quest. Uh, a tick in a grey box is incomplete and a tick in a blue box is complete alright uh, reward types what have we got here we can get rewarded XP we can get rewarded gear uh, money and souls now souls I think are the talent tree um, but of course we'll wait and see now the first thing I want to find is options there's options alright that'll be in the settings so we just want to turn down the music a bit I think once again folks you'll have to bear with me while we get the uh, get the audio right over time I'm not sure if this is going to be too loud or too soft or I have no clue until we play it back so I hope you can uh, hear everything okay in the meantime until we get into the groove of things must admit there's a, a lot of options there and the one thing I do notice about this game that I like already is that whilst we can adjust the individual levels of the music, you, the UI, the voiceover and the effects, there is a master volume right at the top so you don't mess up the delicate balance that you happen to have set uh, as your preference. 
So there we go. Um, in terms of the video options, there's a whole heap of them. I happen to run with VSync on always. I'm just going to turn down that music a little bit. So I've got a funny feeling that it's probably too loud. Anyway, um, we have. Uh, this is what I was talking about earlier where you have a bunch of quality presets in terms of minimum low medium high ultra I've put actually mine's moved over to custom now, but I've got most things set fairly high Well, I noticed that my shadow map Adjusts the quality of shadows this can have a significant impact on the frame rate now We'll just keep playing with it as it is there are some things actually here that I can turn up um, like the shadows um, that anisotropic filtering which makes things in the distance look really nice one thing I do know that I want to turn down straight away is the mouse movement it's way too fast for me uh, what do we got here shader complexity ground clutter terrain distance object distance all the normal sort of things the texture quality quality is up the highest that's the thing that matters the most to me we've got full shadows now speaking of shadows where is mine Right, let's see what happens if we turn up, turn this up. Shadow map resolution. Apply that. Alright, it didn't seem to make any difference to the shadows there, so I might turn that down again. I'll have a play around with this offline um, and try and get to some ideal state. But the big thing to remember here is that there's a bunch of stuff, I was looking at this before, there's an absolute bunch of stuff in terms of interface. So for example, whether or not you see your own name and what names you see above the heads of other players and other NPCs. Um, this is a great one. Enable AOE looting. So auto loot multiple courses in close proximity. That is brilliant. So you don't have to go around clicking on every single um, mob that you've downed in order to get their loot. It will actually grab all the loot from all the mobs that you've um, taken down all around you. That is a fantastic idea. Uh, we have an auto loot by default. I'm going to leave that off for now just because I'm new. I don't know what I'm looting. I want to see it. Uh, and I'm going to uh, enable the shift key to be able to auto loot if I do want to. Um, what else? We've got normal stuff. Hide helm. Um, Head tracking. Interesting. Turn your character's head towards its target. So I presume if I had that person targeted, and we'll, unfortunately the menu's in the way, which by the way you can move all around, but if we target that person, there you go, you can see my head actually changing to look at the person I'm targeting. So that's really cool. I like that. You also have a click to move button. So for those of you who like to do that, who like to actually click on the ground to move rather than using, using the WASD, you can do that. If you turn it off, of course, nothing is going to happen. Um, what do we got in combat? Auto self cast, so automatically self casts beneficial spells when no other target is present, uh, is selected. That's good. Smart target automatically finds a valid target for an ability. Hmm, that's interesting. I'll leave that. Leave that as it is for now. Show target of target. I like that one. I'm going to turn that one on. It's basic, basic target forwarding. Show combat meters. Yes, we want mini overhead damage meters, etc. Um, what else do we have here? Show all party buffs. Yeah, I'm going to turn that on. Not sure what it's going to do exactly, apart from uh, I'd imagine when you're in a group and other characters are buffing you, it's going to show what's active. Cast on target's target. No, I don't want to do that. Sticky targeting I don't want. Um, help action bars. Ah, there we go. So we can lock them, although I notice that there's a lock on the actual hotbar itself down here. Um, yeah, that's not the bar itself, that's actually the ability. So as you can see, I can probably, yeah, so I can shift my racial ability around at the moment. Obviously, if I hit the padlock, I can no longer do that, which is good because it saves you accidentally, accidentally move them around. Um, what do we got here? Clear buttons for removed. Okay, so here is the amount of action bars that we have. So one, two, three. Good lord. How, how many can we have? Four, seven. We can have up to seven built into the UI. I like this game. That's that's awesome. And we can have bars at the side as well. Excuse me, up to four appearing at the side. Wow, that's really cool. Okay, I'm loving how customizable the UI is so far. Um, and I'm also going to go ahead and assume we can drag any of these components around. Yes, we can. Oh, lovely, lovely. Okay, so there's some basic chat, social stuff in here. 
like whether or not it notifies you if your friend is logged on and off status text okay I definitely want this notice up here um, it's going to be like most MMOs whereas if I hover over my character portrait it shows me the actual values of the bars there but when I'm not hovering over it it doesn't I can actually turn that on there you go so I've got 81 health 230 mana and 0 out of 100 charge and this is that special mana charge we we're talking about earlier when we're going through the archetypes and I'll read its definition out there the arcane spells of a mage build up planar energy over time mages can learn spells that channel it towards powerful ends so that's obviously the big special build up power there um, let's see my pet if I get one yes party I want to see what uh, is on the text uh, rather I want to see the text of all of these things I want to see the text of the target uh, Mike's XP bar so obviously this is the XP bar down here this little blue blob I can turn on the text for that and also I can turn on a percentages so you can see um, if you look at say my XP bar I'm 70 out of 1321 um, was that oh whoops uh, if I turn on the um, display percentages button it's going to actually show me that I'm at five percent and it's the same up here for my health and my mana and my charge so I don't know sometimes I like to see them sometimes I don't I guess I'll leave it all on for now um, yeah I'll leave them on we'll, we'll do that all right mouse I'm gonna turn down Wow okay this must have a really high look whoa Yep, it's got a very high mouse speed. I'm going to turn that down to one. That's more my style. Uh, what do we got here for display? We've got auto add quest tracking. Yes, we want that. We want to also show buff durations. Quest stickies. What's this? The number of quests to display in the quest sticky window. I'm presuming that that means when you pick up a quest, it'll leave one of them in a, a little tracker there. And we'll choose to keep that at five. You can also scale up or down the UI by the looks of things, which is fantastic. Camera, smart camera, returns your camera view behind your character when traveling. So let's try that. We'll turn the camera over here, but run forwards. And yes, the camera comes in behind us. That's just the way I like it. Screen messages. So display damage to targets. Oh, okay. So actually, this is the scrolling combat text by the looks of things. Um, and you can display it by X number of seconds on the screen. It's default to four. Show the ability names in combat. Hmm, and ability icons. Display low health. Oh, we want a low health warning. I want to display buffs. Uh, what else can we do? Damage reduction to your character. Yep, I want that. I think I'm pretty much going to turn on turn on everything if it gets too much we can turn it off later show ability names display names not sure about those we'll wait and see here's the big one folks Twitter this is something that um, I know I've been looking forward to a lot yes the game has built in Twitter that's right so what it means is you can actually tweet from the game uh, and you can uh, also get it to auto tweet achievements auto tweet discoveries in the game plus um, it'll take screenshots as well uh, now apparently there are two commands for tweeting I don't know what they are off the top of my head and perhaps they'll be no, they're not going to be in here they're probably in the help menu let's click help and see what happens what is this about mm, no we want to search search let's see if we can search for tweet although this is more about issues rather than a manual I'd imagine yeah so I'll look that up but what you can do is you can log in and you can prefix all of your tweets with your character's name and you can add the hash rift hashtag by default as well so I'm looking forward to doing that I'll log in later and that looks like it's about it for us you've obviously got a key bindings menu um, you can customize your keyboard to your play style. Each slot in your bar allows up to two keybinds. Interesting. To edit, roll over the slot and press the desired key. Okay, right click to unbind or enter new key. Key one position. Interesting. Alright, so that's showing us what they all are. Right click the slot to clear all the bindings. Some other functions can be edited in the same way interesting all right so we won't go through all that with you now but look at that there's obviously tons and tons and tons of customizable key bindings that you can make in the game 
uh, which gets the big thumbs up from me so that's fantastic uh, oh look at that it's actually showing me shift B shift B brings up bags all right um, so that's the settings the bindings edit layout oh look at that in this mode you can change transparency wow move scale disable or dock any component of the UI an arrow and a green pulsing pulsing edge indicate a valid docking connection wow unshown components are represented by a header, header bar and disabled components are tinted red so we can therefore obviously move any of these elements oh and look and save them as well uh, as a configuration that Trion who developed this game that is fantastic I really like that idea brilliant stuff brilliant stuff because there's nothing worse than not being able to uh, customize the layout and look of your UI that is awesome there's a macros menu here so uh, just like most MMOs you're gonna have a macro editor we'll no doubt get into that a lot later um, what's this import button okay so we can import I've got another character here we can import settings from everything from the game settings chat settings macros UI layout key bindings and miscellaneous settings all from one character that is also brilliant because it means you don't have to set up the same damn stuff every single time absolutely love it and then of course we've got our normal options of logout exiting and resuming so I'm mighty impressed so far got to say that can we jump oh whoops nearly jumped over the over the edge there um, yeah and I must say like I was touching on before the game UI is super slick my mouse is super smooth um, now what's that that time is server time if you click it it changes between local time which is 744 p.m. or server time I am actually on a server called Wolfsbane this is the unofficial oceanic server uh, and of course being in Australia that's what I'm going to choose now let's have a look at this shift B stuff shall we shift B opens my bag as you'll notice there I have a collector's satchel because yes I bought the collector's edition um, because it had a nice big 24 slot bag and a free well it's not free but a level 20 mount that I'm um, absolutely looking forward to on the bag menu here obviously we've got one two three four five bag slots it's showing our coin down the bottom here um, we can click this to show all of our various currencies within the game and at the moment uh, now I presume that's also going to show things like um, t gear currencies token faction currencies etc right now it's just showing my platinum gold and silver which are the components of the monetary currency in the game um, oh okay we'll get to that in a minute I, I noticed here there's a search button you can click this and we can type in stuff so let's try this let's type in water and I love this idea um, and I'd imagine well that's all I've got in my bags but it's probably going to filter the view of your bag up here depending on what you write in the search field that is just a brilliant idea if you're looking for you know I don't know a uh, helm or something like that and you can't find it quickly presumably by typing that in it's going to show up up here I'm not sure but that is a damn good idea um, there's a couple of little buttons down here to cycle through our various hotbars, although I'm sure there are hotkeys for that. Um, there's a mail icon glowing up there under the um, bottom of the minimap view. Um, you have mail, cool, don't have no clue where a mailbox is. On the minimap, if I hover my mouse over it, I can zoom in and out, uh, as you can see, and objectives. Yeah, it looks like there's a quest objective showing up on the minimap. Fantastic, and it says it's 21 meters away. There's an NPC, uh, and I would imagine that I can filter. Oops, there's our main map. I clicked on an icon there, which brought up the main map. Click to toggle auto centering of the map on the player. All right, that's pretty cool. Very nice. Oh. Okay, so this is a great innovation. It's called auto fade toggle click to toggle toggle map auto fading when moving you can see there okay I'm going to turn it off with it off if I've got the map open and I move like so many games you normally have to close your map in order to try and figure out where you're going you have a look and go oh, okay I've got to go north close heading north and as you can see on my mini map it shows me that when I'm facing north or not but if we turn on this auto fade toggle look at that 
it just fades out to allow us to see where we're going and it sort of keeps it as a bit of an overlay over the top that is a, a really fantastic idea I love it we've got a show the entire world button here but I'd say that I'm in an instance beginning area so we're not going to see that um, this here is the filters so I've got it currently set to class trainers rifts we'll go through them later um, let's turn on mailboxes let's turn on the bank merchants skill trainers auction house they're all there uh, looks like there's a healer yeah to the north of me so that's great that you can filter what is being shown low level quests and warfront masters so i think warfronts in this game are the equivalent to battlegrounds oh, okay that there showing up is a soul mender not sure what that is yet but i'm sure we'll find out um, so what else have we got in the UI? Obviously we've got my character up here showing my level under my picture, uh, my health, mana and charge. Here's the good old chat window, presumably you hit, yes, hit enter to um, enter your chat. I can grab this and drag it around. I'm going to bring it down uh, as close to the bottom as I can so that I have more real estate. I can probably, there we go, lock that group so now I can't accidentally move it which is good and you can unlock it again let's have a look what we've got in here we've got settings you can change the font size the background color the opacity of it which is great you can see it changing from dark to light there so you can still th see through it um, and, oh and we can show timestamps I really like being able to see timestamps in a game I'm gonna turn that on absolutely for sure because um, that's something that's missing in so many games game messages so we can change the colors of all of these by the looks of things yep um, am I happy with the font size yes and of course we can also literally change the size of the chat box itself one two three four five six seven eight eight lines should be enough for me I have to unlock it we'll move that down a bit and lock it again there we go and I've obviously got a combat log there and of course I can enter um, a new tab I'm just going to call this one test for a second there we go and presumably I can change what particular messages go through it there we go so if I for example wanted it to be uh, yeah let's make this a tab that just shows says uh, says shows tells excuse me um, so all it's going to do is if anyone tells me uh, like that a private message it'll come up in that window alone I always like having one of them let's see if we can actually change the re rename or oh, we can we can rename it so I'm gonna rename that to tells okay there we go and all I've got in there is tell so that's really easy to set up I like that apply cool and then the last thing that we have obviously apart from this great big question mark which is a tutorial uh, tip which we'll get into in a minute the only other component of the UI down here which we'll get into in more detail oh actually sorry there's one more bit here we've got a little um, bubble which is on the chat window just like that and well and it's gonna uh, allow us to click on our most used things like yells and replies and says and all the rest of it but there's also a little um, emote menu here so let's give ourselves a bit of a dance here we go Oh dear. We'll hop over here, shall we? Alright, so what have we got in there? I'm sure these aren't the only emotes in the game, but we've got dance, we've got wave, hello, we've got sit, we've got cheer. Oh, okay, so they actually have voice, that's good. So many games these days don't have voice in the emotes, don't like it one bit. Uh, bow. Oh, lovely bow. We have laugh. <laughs> have laugh and flex. There we go. Arr, look at my muscles. Okay, so I'm sure that there are lots of other emotes that, uh, but they're just a quick selection so that people can click on them easily then we have our windows down the bottom here this is going to open for example our character window so there we are that's us we can spin us around this is showing us our just like every other game showing us the items that we have equipped I hover over them to get their stats and of course if I open my bag and right click there it's going to take them off so doing what everyone else 
we'll do of course is we can take off all our clothes there we go but the reason I want to see that is I want to see if it changes our stats up the top so 81 to 30 no so I right click on our items to put them back on and they're obviously offering absolutely um, no benefit except from some armor if I hover over them and once again it's really smooth I know you won't be able to tell that from the um, YouTube video but boy oh boy this is a smooth interface another thing I notice if you look at the bottom right corner of the box that pops up when I hover over uh, these clothes it's got it says no value um, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that's gonna show me the value of items to a vendor which again in a lot of other MMOs you need to get an add-on for that is really handy you know the more and more little things I see about this game just even now I can tell that the things I've heard are true in that they've taken all the best bits from other games and tried to put it in here to make an all-round enjoyable fun game learning from all the other MMOs that have come before it so far it looks like that's exactly what's going on so very happy about that now obviously when I hit my character log um, it also brings up all these other things like my stats so there are my actual stats and if you hover over them it's going to tell you exactly what's going on so you know armor there reduces physical damage taken by 1.3 percent that's because my value is nine and it's it's green because I'm wearing clothes as you can see here that add to armor so it's showing you that uh, there's something in addition to my base stats going on with that particular stat life resist we know that that was a um, a passive racive uh, a races ugh, goodness me get it right Sambo a racial passive which is giving me that buff and that's why it's actually um, turned green and again if you hover over it it's actually telling you what it means in real terms life resist 20 reduces life damage taken by 3.23 percent and increases chance to resist life spells by two percent so it's giving you the absolute values there which is something that I really like right off the bat fantastic stuff very well done skills I don't have any yet pets I don't have any currency I have none notoriety is no doubt reputation artifacts I have no idea what they are mounts I don't have any and probably won't till level 20 I'd imagine books I understand are collectibles in this game so presumably that's where my list of books will be kept I don't have any companions and I'm going to assume that they're um, vanity pets and I also don't have any titles yet either and it looks like you can have prefix and suffix titles that's great okay continuing on our journey through the UI we have the quest log um, obviously no quests right now we will have very soon we can obviously see whereabouts on the map they are there's a map button we can share the quest and we can abandon the quest or nice simple good stuff there we have a crafting window here no idea obviously can't craft anything we're not trained in any trade skills there's a menu button here that's grayed out don't know what that is abilities so here are obviously our all of our particular abilities that um, you know we're going to learn throughout the game and clearly there's going to be different categories I'm in the general category because that's all I've got our racial passive is there the one we were just talking about before the life resistance increased by 20 we've got our angelic flight which we'll use that in a moment we've got toggle auto attack and toggle ranged attack um, okay so I might drop that one down on the old hotbar for now we'll see see what that does that's our abilities we've got a raid menu here um, obviously I'm not in a group I'm not going to convert that to a raid we'll be touching on that way later into the game there's two more buttons that are grayed out here oh and look we have an achievement screen where will we put that we'll put that over there so here we go we're on zero of Wow there are seven thousand no that can't be right my god there are seven thousand one hundred and ten achievements in this game that is okay wow that is amazing and as you can see it works like achievements do in most other games where you click on them and the details pop up and obviously you'll be able to track the progress of all of them that's impressive wow and that gee okay we're we're gonna be very busy aren't we this is good anyway there you go that was the achievement screen now I wonder if it shows you the shortcuts yes so achievements in this game is H social is O as it should be in any game whoops and obviously there's my friend list and we're gonna to have to add Roman over to that very shortly 
uh, and your ignore list as well and it looks like it shows you where they are what their level is what their class is and their location which is great and you can add notes and what guild they're in great stuff looking good and back to our main menu so there you have it folks there's a quick quick and dirty tour through the UI um, let's wrap this episode up um, very shortly we'll just go for a quick wander let's click on this tutorial tip alert see what it says friendly players you've targeted a friendly player right click the portrait for options like sending messages or inviting them to group with you okay all right so we can right click yeah okay so that is a person I can select them by either left or right clicking it's a player oh look there's all sorts of players coming in if I right click on their portrait I can talk to them inspect them let's inspect them oh and look at that it actually comes up with a character frame so that's great for checking out other people's gear we can follow we can trade we can invite we can join a public group wow didn't know that there were public groups but I think that's going to come in handy for something uh, called rifts later on we can add them to our friends list right there or we can duel them and it looks like also above above their head is some oh yeah okay public group one member not sure what that is I wonder if that appears on other people that I click to yes it does inspect them all right I really love this interface folks it is absolutely fantastic loving it a lot and as you can tell wow look at that armor now see if I can get zoomed right in there that is that is super high detailed for an MMO look at can you see that that you can actually see the texture work on the cloth that is incredible and it's running so smooth and it must say this game looks awfully pretty I, I am the first to admit that when I was watching YouTube videos of this game I thought well you know it looks like any other MMO it doesn't look that great when you see it in the flesh folks I can guarantee you you'll be pleased now let's just go in and double check what my video settings are and can we turn much up let's just turn these things right up at the risk of risk of running it really slow but we can always turn things back down um, shader complexity apply that ground clutter density we'll turn these up quite a bit um, and let's go have a look out the window and see if that made a difference to the frame rate we may need to restart for some of these settings to come into effect I'm not sure that definitely changed the, the uh, view distance because as you can probably see over in the background there I'm pretty sure I couldn't see that mountain uh, before so let's actually go into the options and change that terrain distance down to 4 and apply that no, I can still see it hmm I'm sure I couldn't before oh yeah you can see it in the background there over here in the sort of sunrise area the horizon there you go all right that's far enough I'm sure what will be a real killer um, and it's a bit hard to tell from up here once we get down into the game itself and out into the world will be things like the ground clutter density and the radius um, let's turn up these let's turn up these shadow map resolutions again a lot of these things may not come into play until we until we actually restart the game but hey we'll turn them up for now I don't seem to have lost any frames and there you go that's what it looks like when you select another character so you've got a number of things as you can see for a start oh that's fantastic look on the ground in front of my feet Okay, there's an arrow that's going to always point towards the selection that I have and that follows me that is a brilliant idea oh I love rift already uh, and obviously there's a big boingy arrow on the top and a selector a selection circle below them so let's go select this person over there to the right and you can see my head changing as well if I zoom right in you'll see my head turning to look at whoever I've got selected which is pretty cool um, but in this case let's select that person over there look on the ground and yes even if I'm turning facing the other direction the arrow always points towards the person I've got selected love it a lot love it a lot and as you can see there's tooltips as well when I hover over this fantastic looking character here 
Uh, it says her name is the messenger of the vigil. She's a humanoid, she's a warrior, and she's level question mark, and she's bright red in terms of level, which means she's way ahead of, or he, maybe it's a he, no it's a she, way ahead of me. And you can tell from the portrait up here actually, obviously a really special character got 15,000 hit points, yeah, way above my level. Alright, so I think that will do for our first episode. Um, I know for some of you that it will be frustrating because we didn't get out into the action straight away, but I really, really wanted to make sure that we covered off the core components of the game. So we've gone through, and I know it's been a lengthy episode, we've gone through all the classes, we've gone through the archetypes, we've gone through some of the character creation, and most importantly we've gone through all the components of the absolutely fantastic UI. We've seen how customizable it is, how movable it is, um, and I'm sure that we'll play with that as time goes on. Hopefully the sound wasn't too messed up. Um, oh, she's having a stretch. Uh, but now we're all set to journey on. We're going to, uh, in the beginning of our next episode, talk to this NPC, start seeing what the questing looks like um, and the combat, of course. And then once we get out of the starter area, what we'll do is meet up with Romanova and off we go on our journey towards level 50. So I certainly hope you stay with us. I certainly hope that you're enjoying this. In the meantime, this is me, Sambo, and Seraphis, our wonderful mage, Bidding you farewell, hoping that you're having a great day. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.